Hey guys, Mark Howe here, and today I am making a slitting saw arbor for an upcoming project that I'm working on. Now, in truth, I really could have done with one before when I made the quick change tool post build, and yeah, I'm gonna have to live with that. But anyway, today is the day that's all gonna change because I have this El Cheapo Cobalt slitting saw that I recently purchased, and it has about a 22 mil internal bore and an 80 mil outer diameter, and I'm gonna be making the whole thing, well, most of it, out of this piece of hot rolled mystery steel that I have lying around. Now, it isn't the greatest material, but it is what I had in a large enough diameter to give me the dimensions that I wanted. And I got a pretty okay surface finish, you know, using a high-speed tool and slow feeds and speeds. I managed to get pretty good accuracy on this part, but it did take me a while. But now, to be able to save myself some time, I figured I would first set my dividers to about the rough diameter I want to achieve, that being 22 millimeters, and then I could do a succession of really light, quick, fast, roughing cuts, and then only use the calipers every now and again to check my progress, except for when they don't fit? Oh no. Oh no. What? Ah, uh, really? Okay, guys, when you're doing that, just remember to do your math correctly before you do the hand wheels. But anyway, we can recover this. And the plan to do so is basically by just continuing with the body. We're going to turn the whole thing down in one operation to about a nominal diameter of 20 mil and give that a quick polish. And then, yeah, that actually turned out a lot better. So yeah, I'm happy with that. That's about 20 mil. Then we can come in and part off our mistake so that no one ever knows. And then... Hacksaw Yahtzee. Still counts, right? I don't know. Someone asked Blondie Hacks for me. Anyway, we're gonna polish off that end. Nice and shiny. And then we are done with basically the arbor that's gonna go in the mill. Next, I'm gonna fire up these little copper shims and dial in the part in the forge or chuck to do the basically the receiving bore that's going to hold the inner arbor that's going to hold the slitting saw. So anyway, here we go. Bit of a back chamfer for some aesthetic purposes. A little bit of foul. And now we can start pilot drilling to drill out the main bore. This was done in a couple steps. As you can see, the lathe isn't too happy in back here. Then we're going to go ahead and bore it out. And then the final point of measuring. Now, I sort of took my time with this, try to get it right, try to go back and forth, sand it, clean it out nicely, deeper, everything. And then now I can drill the, essentially, the hole for the M6 bolt, except for when I decide that maybe M8 is gonna be a little bit more substantial. So we're gonna go ahead and tap this. And then always remember guys, whenever you're using anything like this Tapmatic that I am using, is to clean your taps. This keeps them nice and rust free for many more years. I can't tell you the amount of secondhand taps I've bought that look like absolute garbage. But anyway, so now we can go ahead and focus on the little stub arbor that's gonna hold the slitting saw directly. As you can see, this was a chunk of stainless I found in my scrap bin, and this machined so much nicer. I really wish I had a whole big piece of this that I could have used from the start. But anyway, I decided to just take my time, do a nice finishing pass, give it a quick lick with the file, bit of a polish with some scotch bright, and then strangely the part was still too small. Now originally I had thought that maybe I had just not let it cool down before I did my final pass, but the micrometer seemed to confirm that that was running fine, so that wasn't the problem. So, actually, spoiler alert, I did go back at the end of this project, as I'm editing this now, and the micrometer was reading about 0.03 millimeters out of zero. Anyway, at this stage, I decided to just soldier on with the project, part the part off, and then flip the part in the forge or chuck. Now, seeing as the forge or chuck was pretty much all I used during this project, I decided to go ahead and freshen up these little copper shims that I had made for it. Now, you don't really have to do a lot to get copper annealed. You don't have to take it to a glowing red heat. You just have to be able to see the heat in the part. So that softens them enough to be able to do some tapetry on the drawers themselves, get them nice and snug on there so they don't want to 
pull apart or snag on any of my work or snag on the tool post. And then I can chew this part up again. And evidently that little detour must have distracted me from getting the part perfectly chewed since it still has a little bit of a wobble and you can see it here on film. I couldn't really see it there in person. Anyway, we're gonna go ahead, make the flat bottomed hole that's gonna hold the cap edge screw and allow us to keep the two parts together. Give it a little bit of a nice chamfer and then that part is done. So yeah, a few mishaps along the way, but I mean, it was such a simple project that I figured it would be quite easy, but anyway. So here it is, all assembled and ready to go. Now, I did actually go back and tune the, uh, tune the runout out as much as I could, but after all that, there was still some runout in the sole. And you can actually see it here. But despite all that, I'm still getting a really good surface finish, which you can see here. Despite the scratches, it's almost mirror-like. But anyway guys, this is the Sitting Saw Arbor Complete. And as you can see, it is now already in use on an upcoming project, which is going to be used in the Vice build. So I know that video has been a long time coming, but anyway guys, thanks for watching. I've been Mark Howe, and yeah, see you in the next one.